time for our gentle vinyasa flow. We'll warm up, go through a few poses, and cool down at the end. We'll start in child's pose today. So you can start from all fours, hands and knees. I like a wide child's pose, so I tend to bring my knees wider apart with toes together. And then we sink the hips back to the heels, trying to find that nice length in the spine. You can have your hands forward with your palms grounded into the mat or floor. You can stack your hands and rest your forehead on your hands. You can also bring your hands back to your sides, resting your forehead on the floor. Today I just feel like stacking my hands. And then bringing awareness to the hips and the lower back. And let's use this pose to try to release and unlock the lower back, finding some length in the spine. Just think about those hips sinking back and down towards your heels, spine lengthening. We'll come into our breath. At first, we'll just become aware of our breath, just following the inhales and exhales. And let's begin to count in our own heads how long each inhale and how long each exhale is. Now let's try to equalize those inhales and exhales so they're the same length. Let's take a deep inhale through the nose and sigh it out through the mouth. Now we can seal our lips and we'll just breathe in and out through the nose, coming into our ujjayi breath. You want to feel a slight constriction in the back of your throat so you make your breath audible to yourself and it'll sound like the ocean. Let's all extend our arms forward, rest the forehead, settle in, finding that length in the spine. Let's inhale and exhale the right hand over on top of the left hand, and sink the right hip back. Use our breath to expand the right side of the rib cage. With each inhale, we open those ribs a little more, stretching all those little intercostal muscles that connect the ribs. And we'll inhale and exhale that right hand back out. Just settling in for a couple of breaths here. Sinking the hips. And then we can inhale and exhale the left hand over on top of the right hand our next breath, we can sink that left hip back down. And as we continue to inhale and exhale, we'll use those inhales to expand the left side of the rib cage and stretch out those intercostal muscles. Inhale and exhale that left hand back over. So our hands are about shoulder width. A couple of breaths. Let's really ground our palms down now. Pressing the heel of the palm down, the knuckles of the palm, the fingertips down. Fingers are spread. On our next inhale, let's lift up the hips, coming into puppy pose. We'll bring our knees in 
under our hips, with our legs pointing straight out behind us. We can slide our hands forward or we can walk our knees back. So we have hips stacked over knees now, arms extended, forehead down. Let's take the right hand and slide it under, still keeping the chest pretty much facing straight down, threading the needle here. So this one not so much a twist as just a shoulder stretch. Sometimes we thread the needle as part of a twisting move. We'll do that in a little bit, but for now just work on that shoulder. So keep turning your chest down toward the floor. Let's bring that right hand back forward. Take a breath. Now we'll slide the left hand under, again, working on that shoulder stretch, keeping the chest pretty much facing down toward the floor. And breathe. Let's bring that left hand forward again. Just to stay here for a breath or two. Drop our elbows down to the mat and slide forward, bringing our hips down with our elbows under our shoulders. We'll do a baby cobra here, just lifting up, taking pressure off the elbows, just engaging the lower back. Let's relax back down. As we inhale, we'll lift, just baby cobra, not a big hyperextension, just engaging the back. Bring it down. One more time, we'll lift Baby Cobra. We'll bring it back down. Now sliding the elbows back under the shoulders with the forearms either parallel or fingers laced. Hips melting into the floor, relaxing the midsection, relaxing the abs, relaxing the lower back. You press down to the elbow to lift the chest up. The sphinx pose. Imagine pulling your rib cage away from your pelvis, opening up the front of your body. Pull the shoulders back and down, lift the sternum up, and relax. Come back onto our hands and knees. Knees under the hips, wrists under the shoulders, option to use fists for wrists. Picking cat cow, starting with cow, we inhale and lift the chest and tailbone looking forward of the mat. As we exhale, we scoop the abs, we curl in, looking at the knees. If you have in your practice a more extreme head movement, that's up to you. I'm giving you kind of a moderate head movement. So we're not going to put too much pressure on the neck this way. Looking forward of the mat is easy on the neck, looking further forward is harder on the neck, but that's up to you. Following your own breath, letting the breath cue you, going to exhale and then scoop. Then when it's time to inhale, you can lift. When you come back to the last round you're doing, just come back to neutral. Sliding shoulders down the back, drawing the abs in. Let's inhale the left arm into the air. And exhale, scooping under. Inhale, lift it up. Exhale, swoop it under. Inhale, lift. This time we'll thread the needle here, but this time we are turning more through the torso. Bringing the shoulder down, bringing the temple down. Looking under the right arm more openness in the front of the body. That right hand can just stay where it is, relaxed. It can press more strongly into the floor to open you up more to your twist. It can walk out past your head to open up your right side body more. 
We can wrap around in a half bind, rolling the shoulder back, opening the shoulder more. I don't think of these as levels, I think of these as different options, whatever you want to work on more today. Plant that right hand back where it was to start. And now inhaling the left arm up into the air, exhaling it back down. Take a breath. Now we can inhale the right arm up into the air. Exhale, sweep it under. Inhale, lift it up. Exhale, sweep it under. Inhale, lift. And this time, as you exhale, you're threading the needle. Reaching on through, bringing the shoulder down, bringing the temple down. Option, just relax that left hand if you like, or to press into it. Open up the twist a little bit more. Or to slide it forward for the side body. Or to wrap it around and roll that shoulder back. And open up the shoulder a bit more. Find your breath. Find whatever option works best for you today. It may not be the same every day you do it. But plant that left hand. Now we're inhaling the right arm back into the air. Exhaling it back down. So again, check that our shoulder blades are sliding down. Our neck is long. We have lots of space between our ears and shoulders. Extending the right foot back. Reflex the foot. Make the leg straight and strong. Extend the left arm forward for spinal balance. We can hold it here. We can challenge ourselves a little bit more by going to a 45 degree angle. We can sway back and forth. We'll come back to stillness. We'll come back down to hands and knees. Now we can float that left leg back. Parallel to the floor, foot flexed, leg strong, right arm forward, spinal balance. Again, we can hold it right here. We can go to 45 degree angle. We can sway in front and behind. You really want to brace your core on this one. Help you keep stable. Coming back to forward and back. Coming back to hands and knees. A couple of cat cows at your own pace, following your own breath. As you finish up your next cat, come back to neutral. Just sway the hips from side to side a little bit. Coming back to stillness. Let's step the right foot forward. Coming into our low lunge. We can walk our hands up to the thigh. Now we want to get a little bit of opening and stretch in this left leg. So if we don't feel it yet, we can walk the foot back a little bit. Finding more openness here. Let's bring our hands to prayer to forehead. Inhale to lift. Exhale to round forward. back and pack them down. Let's take some helicopter arms here, straight out to the side. Inhaling, we stack the spine tall. Exhaling, we're turning to the right toward that forward knee. More gentle twist. Perhaps putting the head, looking over the right shoulder. Relaxing back to center. Come to prayer hands. 
Inhale, stack the spine tall, exhale, lean it forward. Let's turn to the right and try to hook the left elbow so it's back to the thigh. Let's inhale, lengthen the spine. Draw the abs in. Exhale, take the twist. And breathe. Lengthen on the inhale, turn on the abs in. Relaxing back to center. Now let's frame the front foot. One more twist here. We're grounding into the left hand. That's the hand on the inside of your foot. We're inhaling the right hand up. That's the hand on the outside of your foot. Inhale that. Relax and back down. Let's walk the hands up to the thigh. Let's lean forward into this hip opening stretch. This Anjani Asana. And then we'll shift back, straighten the front leg, bringing fingertips down, long spine, inhale the spine with length, exhale holding the chest toward the thigh, for Hanumanasana, the hamstring stretch. Go easy on it, breathe and sink. And we'll slide forward, walking the hands back up to the thigh. Lifting the chest will give us more stretch in the hip. If you lean forward and during the stretch, we'll get less hip. We'll still get some quad there, but we're going to get hip and quad here. Use sinking breath. Inhale and exhale to go deeper. And we'll press back to Hanumanasana one more time. Long spine. Hinging forward. Imagine drawing the breath all the way down into the hamstring of your right leg, your forward leg. Breathing and sinking. Let's bring that right foot back. Let's come to hands and knees. Following your own breath, a couple of cat cows. Coming back to neutral when you're ready. This time I'd like to imagine you sliding your rib cage from side to side. Just shifting it. Hands and knees are still anchored. Just shifting the rib cage right to left, left to right. Limbering up the spine. Coming back to neutral. We're stepping the left foot forward. And again, we want to open up the back leg a little bit. So if we need to slide the front foot forward or walk the back foot back a little bit to find more openness in the right hip, we can do that. We can walk our hands up to the thigh, stack the spine. Bring hands to heart center, Anjali Mudra, and then come into forehead when we have to lift. We'll exhale around forward. Rise up. Little back bend. Down. Three. For two. Use the breath. Inhale to open and lift. And exhale and down. As we come back down, we're going to rise back up. Let's roll the shoulders back and down. Let's extend the arms out. Inhale, stack the spine. Exhale, turn to the left with that front leg. Inhaling to lengthen, exhaling to turn. A couple of breaths here. Coming back to center. Spin hands to heart center. Long spine, hinging forward, lengthening, and then exhaling to turn, hooking the right elbow over the left leg. Inhale, lengthen the spine, draw the abs in. Exhale, deepen the twist. Turning left this time. Lengthen and twist.
relaxing back to center. Now our third twist, bringing our hands down to frame the front foot. Now we're grounding into the right hand. Again, it's the hand on the inside of your foot we're grounding into. And we're inhaling the outside hand, the left hand, up into the air. Just find whatever twist works for you. Whatever range. Just work on lengthening your spine. That's your key. Relaxing back down. Step the left foot back and back to all fours, following your breath. For cat cow. Coming back to neutral when we're ready. Bringing toes together, opening knees wide. Sitting back to child's again, just to release that back. We've done quite a few little back bends and twists and so forth. So now we'll just take a couple of breaths here. Listening up. On our next inhale, let's lift and straighten our hips coming into a kneeling plank. Shoulders over the elbows with straight hips. We'll exhale back to child's. Inhale to plank. Exhale to child's. We'll just keep going with this. You can pause and rest in child's whenever you want to. I'm going to add on, but you don't have to. You can keep doing this. I'm going to inhale. Exhale, kneeling chaturanga, elbows close to the side. Inhale, back to plank. Exhale, child's. Inhale. Exhale. Notice in my kneeling chaturanga so far, my shoulders don't go below my elbows. That's how we protect the shoulder joint here. One more like that. You can still just do kneeling plank or something else that works better for you. Whatever works for you is good for me. Adding on to this now. Inhaling, plank. Exhaling through our chaturanga all the way down to the floor. Inhaling that baby cobra again. And as we exhale, let's engage the core, draw in through the abs, and we'll float the hips up and back. Coming to child's. Let me just reiterate that when we lift the hips and shift back to child's, we really want to engage the core first. Think about Uddiyana Bandha, drawing the navel in. That Uddiyana Bandha helps support and stabilize the spine. It will prevent hyperextension of the back. So your choice, whatever portion of this flow works best for you, and inhaling to kneeling plank, I'm exhaling through Chaturanga down to the mat. I'm lifting the baby cobra. And then floating the hips back, drawing the abs in. Inhaling plank. Exhaling Chaturanga to the mat. Inhaling cobra. Exhaling abs tight, plump the hips. One more time. Inhaling. Exhaling more. Inhaling baby cobra. Exhaling, draw the abs in, float the hips, sink back. Find breath. Let's stay here for let's say three breaths or so. begin to walk our hands in toward our knees so we're sitting up slowly always taking our time coming up off the floor because if we get up too quickly we could get dizzy so we have to give time for the heart to pump the blood back to our brain again so from here curling toes under walking hands back come out to the balls of the feet and inhaling to ground the heels and straighten the legs into forward fold. Knee, legs are not completely locked, they're just a little soft. Head is hanging. Just breathing and sinking into it. 
to nod the head or shake the head, releasing tension in the neck. On our next inhale, we can bring our hands to our shins and lengthen the spine out for a halfway lift. Breathing, slide the shoulder blades down. Let's try to lift the sternum forward, keeping the gaze for the most part down so we keep the neck in line with the spine. Let's extend the arms back for airplane. Keeping that nice length in the spine, think about your shoulder blades sliding towards your back hip pockets. Think about drawing your abs in, really bracing that core. Now floating our hands back to our shins for a halfway lift, flat back. Inhale, exhale, fold forward. Inhale back to halfway lift. Exhale and fold. Inhale and lift. Exhale and fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Let's add on to this. We'll exhale to fold. And we'll inhale to sweep our arms and rise all the way up. Let's bring our hands down to our sides. Palms forward. Fingers nice and active. Coming into mountain pose. I have my feet hip width apart. You're welcome to bring your feet closer together if you like. Hip width is more stable. Closer together is more challenging. Shifting the weight from one foot to the other. Really grounding the feet into the floor. Feel that connection. Padavaka. Coming to stillness. Let's lift our toes. Now starting with your pinky toe, let's bring one toe at a time down to the mat. So even the toes are sealed to the floor. Let's travel up our legs and activate the leg muscles. Let's imagine drawing the kneecaps up. Think about spiraling your thighs inward. Drawing the navel in. Imagine if you could draw your navel up into your ribcage. Lifting your sternum, stacking your spine, chin parallel to the floor. We have a string tied to the top of our head, drawing us up toward the ceiling, finding lots of length, extension through the spine. Now sliding the shoulder blades back and down. Lengthening the spine, slide the sacrum down, levelizing the pelvis. Stay here and breathe for a couple of breaths. Everything is active. It's a very active pose. Now let's inhale and sweep our arms up. And exhale and press them down. Let's make infinity signs with our arms, just gently tracing infinity signs in one direction. So sideways figure eight, and reversing direction. Coming back to stillness, inhaling to rise, exhaling to press. Let's inhale the right arm up, find length in the right side of the body. I give you the option to keep the arm straight up with the shoulder packed. We're going to inhale and lengthen, expanding the right side body, and exhale, taking more of a lateral flexion. Up to you. Use the breath to expand and sink. Okay, rise back up. We'll exhale the arm back to the side. We'll inhale the left arm up. You can hold it straight up. Just try to find lift and openness in the left side of the body. Or inhale, expand the ribs, and exhale, taking lateral flexion. Breathe. Inhale back up, and exhale back down. Let's flow those arms. So we'll inhale the right arm, and exhale down. Inhale the left arm, and exhale down. Right. Two. And 
one. Let's inhale both arms up. Let's exhale, soften our knees and swan dive. Arms out to the side, coming into forward fold with swan dive. Inhaling to lift halfway. Exhaling to fold. Inhaling to sweep up. Exhaling arms to our sides. Let's inhale the right arm over. And exhale down. Left arm over. And down. Let's bring both arms up. And we'll swan dive back down. Inhaling to halfway lift. Exhaling to fold. Inhaling to sweep up. Exhaling arms to our sides. Flowing the right arm. Flowing the left arm. Both arms up. Swan dive down. Halfway lift. Forward fold. Rise up. Arms to our sides. Flowing the right arm. Flowing the left arm. Both arms up. Swan dive down. Halfway lift. Inhale. Forward fold. Exhale. Sweep up. Arms to our sides. Flowing the right. Going to left. Deep breath. Bring hands to heart center. Let's step back with the right foot. Into that lunge. Keep it high this time. We can stay hands with heart center. We can roll our shoulders back. We can cactus arms if you like, or we can extend up. Bend it arms. Crescent lunge. Inhaling tall. Let's exhale and pivot that back heel down coming into warrior one. So in warrior one, the back leg is straight and strong. The foot's at about a 45 degree angle. This is for long stance. Heels more or less line up. Hips, we try to square as much as we can without twisting the back knee too much. Front knee is over the front ankle. Find lifting the upper body. And inhale, lift up, and exhale, coming to a short stance, warrior one, but you feet parallel. Now our feet are on train tracks. There's some hip width space between them. Inhale, lift, the pyramid crack. Bring hands to hips. Pull we'll exhale and hinge forward. Long spine. Coming into pyramid, flat back. Keeping the spine long and parallel to the floor. You can hang out here. If you bring your right hand down to the floor or to your left leg, you can open up, you can roll your left shoulder and open your left shoulder to the side, coming into a revolved triangle, and extend the left arm up if you like. If you have a chair you want to use, we learned that last week. Trying to stack the shoulders. Bring that left hand down. Wherever we are, we're going to soften the left knee and step the right foot forward so we find ourselves in forward fold. We halfway lift as we inhale. We fold as we exhale. We inhale and rise. Exhale arms to our sides. We'll throw the right off and over. Let's slow the left arm up and over. Let's come back to heart center. Let's step back to the left foot. To our high lunge. Again, options for hands can be prayer hands, roll the shoulders back, cactus arms when you stand up. Press it lunge. Sinking the hips. On our next inhale, we'll rise and we'll pivot that back heel down, coming into our long stance, warrior one. The back leg straight and strong. Think about grounding it to the outside edge of your back foot. 
keeping the front knee stacked over the front ankle. A couple of breaths. Next inhale, we'll lift and we'll exhale, kind of like a short stance, warrior one, feet parallel, feet a hip width apart. Hips can square easily now. Inhale, lengthen. Please exhale, and then you can feel your crap. So legs are straight but not locked. You can keep more bend in the front knee if you need it, it's fine. Hands on hips today, shoulders roll back. Inhale, we'll lift the front body, we'll exhale and hinge forward. Come into a flat back pyramid, long spine. Long spine is key here if you want to move with me toward the revolved triangle. We can bring the left hand down to the floor. Or if you have a chair you want to use, or if you have a block, or if you want to control your leg, lots of options here. You can roll that right shoulder back and open up, turn it to the right side. Extend the arm up. Revolve the right angle. A couple of breaths. Relax that arm back down. Wherever you are, soften your front knee, your right knee, step your left foot forward, finding forward fold. Inhaling to halfway lift, exhaling to fold, inhaling to rise up, exhaling on to side, from the right side, from the left side. Left, choose your arms, make it more than one, shorten your stance, have a crack, black back pyramid, stay here, we'll take an option, rotating triangle, revolve triangle. It back down, soften the front knee, step forward, inhaling halfway lift, exhaling fold, inhaling rise, exhale the arms down, go to the right side, go to the left side, back to heart center, step foot back, choose arms. Come into long stance, warrior one. Come into short stance, warrior one. Come into pyramid prep. Lift the front body, folding forward, flat back pyramid. Feel free to hang out here. We'll take an option for evolved triangle. Down, soft, soft in the front knee, step the back foot forward so that we're in forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, arms come down. Flow the right. Flow the left. Let's inhale, both arms up. Swan dive, really soft knees, deep swan dive. Let's bring our hands all the way down to the floor. Come back to hands and knees. And we'll sit back into Thunderbolt pose. Thunderbolt has our feet and knees together, so we're not having to drop all the way down to the floor. Let's roll our shoulders. Sweep the right arm up. Pat ourselves on the back. Now if we have a strap, you can hold a strap with that right hand. We'll take the left arm out to the side. We'll turn the thumb under. Now we'll slide the arm all the way across the back around your waist. So get as far over as you can first. Then reach up and grab that strap as high as you can. If you don't need a strap and you can grab your fingertips, that's great. If you don't have a strap and can't grab your fingertips, just grab your elbow and pull back this way. Bumukasana, cow face pose. Nice opening for the shoulder and triceps. 
relax. Let's roll the shoulders back. That shoulder roll is always a nice place to start. It sets the shoulder, gives us more room to move. Inhaling the left arm up, patting ourselves on the back, grabbing a strap if we like. Right arm goes out to the side, we flip the thumb under, and then we reach across and around the waist as far as we can to start. Then we lift up as high as we can, grabbing the strap, grabbing fingertips if we can. And if we can't quite get the fingertips, we can grab the elbow and push back, lifting the sternum. The bottom hand pulls down, the top elbow points up. We breathe, we stretch. And relax. All right. Let's drop to one hip. Swing our legs around. And shake them out. Let's take Dandasana, staff pose. If you don't have a strap, you can plant your hands and lift your chest, lengthening your spine and pressing forward as you exhale. If you have a strap, and wrap it around the balls of your feet, sitting up tall, pressing forward. Lengthening and hinging deeper. Now let's inhale, lengthen the spine. And exhale, we can release and round forward. Bring our hands to our shins or our feet. Letting the head hang, deepening the stretch. You feel this in your lower back and in your hamstrings. And rising back up. Bring the right foot to the left thigh. Facing the left foot, inhale tall. If you have a strap, wrap it around the ball of your foot. If you don't have a strap, then reach straight forward. Keep the gaze forward and hinge forward. Long spine to start. Now, after a few breaths, hinging, you can release and round. Inhale and exhale. Imagine drawing the breath all the way down into your hamstrings. Rising back up. We'll lift that right knee. You can either leave your foot inside your thigh or across your thigh. We're sweeping the right arm back and inhaling the left arm up. Exhaling that left elbow. You can take the elbow across the right knee. You can extend the arm if you like that better. You can also just grab that leg if that's more comfortable for you. So find an option. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, take a twist to the right. Again, with your inhale, reach you deeper. Relaxing back to center. Straighten out the legs and shake them out. Bring the left foot to the right thigh, facing the right foot, keeping the spine tall, reaching forward, wrapping the strap around the ball of your foot, inhale, lengthen, exhale, press the chest forward. We're working on the length of the spine here, not how deep we're going. Focus on that spinal alignment, lifting your chest, the shoulders back and down. Breaths. Let's inhale and exhale, releasing, rounding forward, grabbing the shin of the foot, letting the head hang. And we try to draw the breath all the way down to our hamstrings. back up. Let's lift that right left knee. You can leave the foot inside your thigh or bring it across, sweeping that left arm back. 
inhaling the right arm up and then take your option exhale across your leg open your arm if you like or hug your leg if you like inhale tall exhale and twist lengthen as you inhale and then deepen the twist as you exhale just do whatever is available to you don't force it don't make it uncomfortable relaxing back to center shake out the legs let's draw the feet in soles together baddha konasana bound angle pose you can make the pose a little gentler by sliding your feet further forward to make it more challenging drawing your feet in a typical place to be is with your heels about the distance of one of your feet from your torso grabbing the ankle stacking the spine lifting the sternum pulling the shoulders back and down inhale exhale and hinge forward you may be able to rest your elbows on your thighs you may be able to gently press into your thighs with your elbows breathing sinking opening the hips and rising back up now crossing our legs you can take whatever comfortable cross works for you but if you would like more hip opening you can do a pigeon where we stack our shins knee over ankle ankle over knee let's roll the shoulders and how tall exhale release forward now we can round over here folding the chest toward the shin letting the head hang and as always taking our time listening to the body letting the body tell us how far and how fast to move deeper into this pose if you take your time and follow your breath you will find more openness and more range as you go along you won't get it all at once. So take your time, be patient, and sit. Hold your chest towards your shins. Maybe you can walk your hands farther out. Just, just play with it. Find what works for you. Begin to slowly walk our hands back in, and we can sit up, and we'll just switch the cross of our legs. Whatever you did before, just do the same thing with the other leg on top. Inhale tall, exhale release and round forward, let the head hang, follow your breath, take your time, let the chest sink towards your shins. Let the head hang heavy. Perhaps you're walking your fingertips a little farther as you go along. hands back in toward our legs, so sitting up, and straighten our legs, slide our heels to the end of the mat if we're on the mat, shake the legs out, you can stack your spine, tuck your tailbone and roll down one vertebra at a time, or you can hug one knee and roll yourself down with control that way, sending the legs, guts it, all the legs into the chest, hugging the thighs, rolling the legs in a circle three times one direction, Reversing it three times the other direction. Now bringing the arms between the knees, grabbing the foot on the inside or outside for happy baby. Soles of the feet face the ceiling, knees draw down toward the floor. We're trying to stack our ankles over our knees and we're trying to bring our entire spine down to the floor or mat. Rocking side to side. Massaging the back. 
finding stillness, releasing our legs out and down, letting our arms float down. Our feet could just flop out to the side. Our palms can face up. We're moving toward our Shavasana. So let's just scan the body and make any adjustments necessary to feel fully supported. Embrace. You may need to adjust your hips up or down to find that right length in your lower back. You might need to adjust your shoulder blades. Maybe you don't want to slide your head up or down. We're closing our eyes. Trying to make sure everything feels supported, relaxed. We just don't want any effort in the body holding anything up at all. Everything should just be melting down, sinking into the floor. Let's just become aware of the weight of the body. The whole body heavy, the whole body sinking down. Feel those points where your body contacts the floor or mat. Feel the weight, feel grounded. Come back to your breath. Keep your awareness on your breath, your inhales and exhales. Try to keep the mind clear and if any thoughts wander in, just acknowledge them, let them pass. And bring your focus back to your breath. And let that breath draw you deeper into your Shavasana.
Please stay in Shavasana for as long as you'd like. And whenever you're ready to come back into the body, we'll deepen the breath. We can rock the head from side to side. We can bring movement to our fingers and toes, to our wrists and ankles. We can sweep our arms up over our heads, reaching our fingertips in one direction, pointing our toes the opposite direction, inhaling to lift the rib cage and lengthen for full body stretch. Exhaling to relax, inhaling to lengthen, exhaling to relax, inhaling out, exhaling release, finding our breath, bending our knees, planting our feet, rolling to one side. Stacking one hip over the other, stacking one shoulder over the other, resting the head. And with as little effort as possible, pressing ourselves up to a comfortable seated position. Round our sits bones, stack the spine, roll the shoulders back, bring the hands to heart center. Thank you for sharing this practice with me today. Namaste.